Welcome to the Photoshop Training Channel. In this tutorial, we'll be creating an alien creature inside of a clear egg. To achieve this effect, we're going to use these five images, we're going to crop them, mask them, and do various other techniques to achieve this final effect. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is create a new document. You can create a new document by pressing Ctrl N on your keyboard or by clicking on File and New. Then rename your document. I'm going to name it Alien Egg. Set your width to 1280 and your height to 780. Resolution 72. Your background to transparent. When you're done, just press OK. And by the way, I realized that I misspelled the word alien. I spelled it A-L-I-N-E instead of A-L-I-E-N. So I apologize for that. I'm not going to go back and change it. We're just going to have to live with that. So let's move on. We're going to add some guides to our document so we can see where the center point is. Make sure your rulers are turned on. To turn those on, click on View and make sure that the ruler option has a check mark or you can just press Control R if they're not showing. Also, make sure your snap's turned on. And what that does is when you click and drag a guide from the ruler, it snaps to the center point. So watch when I hover over the center point at 390 pixels in the Y axis, it snaps. We can do the same thing for the X axis and it'll snap right at 640. So this is our center point of our document right here. I'm going to add one more guide in the Y axis at 490 pixels and you can see that little tooltip right above the guide giving me a number as I scroll down. So I'm going to go all the way down to 490 pixels. This is going to be the horizon line to our table and our background. So I'm just going to leave that at 490. Next I'm going to rename this layer 1 by double clicking on it, I'll rename it to wall since this will be the wall to my background. I'm going to fill it with white, I'll click on the layer, press Alt and Backspace to fill, then I'm going to create this into a smart object, that way all my filters are editable. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. So click on Convert to Smart Object. Then come into the foreground and background palettes, double click on the foreground and change the foreground color to a hue of 178 degrees, a saturation of 21%, and a brightness of 52%. Press OK. Double click on the background. S set your hue to 171 degrees, 21% saturation, and a brightness of 35%. Press OK. Then, with your wall layer selected, click on Filter, Render and Clouds. Next we're going to add a little blurriness to this background so click on Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur and set your blur to about 9 pixels or so. Press OK. OK so then we're going to add some noise to our background. To do that we're going to click on Filter, Noise, Add Noise. We're going to set our amount to 3.5 Make sure your Gaussian is selected and make sure that monochromatic is unchecked. When you're done, press OK. Then we're going to add one more blur so we can click on Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and set this blur to about 1.8. And when you're done, press OK. Now the reason we added a smart filter to this layer is so we can come back and edit our filters if we need to. So for example, maybe we want a little more noise. You can click on the name of the filter, press OK, and you can edit the amount of noise in this particular filter. If I press OK, it'll update the image. I'm going to press Control c to stay at the original values, but this is the reason why we created a smart filter, so you can always go back and edit the filters if you need to. Also, a little quick tip, if you click on the icon here to the right of this, you can set the blending mode or the particular filter that you added to your image and the opacity as well. I'm just going to press cancel on that. I just wanted to quickly show you what that did. Now we're going to add a marquee around the top half of the image and go all the way down to that second guide we created. The one that's at about 490 pixels in the Y axis. And then we're going to click on our layer mask icon to create a layer mask and it will hide everything below the horizon line. We're going to add our table here in just a moment. Before we do that, we're going to feather the mask just a little bit so it's not such a hard edge. And I think 5 pixels should be okay for this. 
just come into the properties panel if you don't see the properties panel go into window and make sure the properties has a check mark right next to it and you can just go into feather and you can use a slider or just press or just type 5 on the text box there the next step is to bring in our wood texture which will become our table so I'm going to go ahead and open that up okay this is our wood here I'm just going to click on the move tool click and drag the tab down then click and drag the image onto the composition I'm going to go ahead and close this since I don't need it anymore I'm going to click and drag it so I can see the corner of this image then I'm going to press control T on the keyboard so I can get my transform handles click and drag while holding shift to scale the image down I'm just going to scale it down just a little bit more and then I'm going to go to the right corner until the arrow turns into that little arc so I can rotate the image while holding shift and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees once I do that I'm going to scale it back up so it's about the same height as my composition just once I get that right I'm just going to press enter I'm going to click and drag the image to the new layer icon to duplicate the image the bottom layer I'm going to click and select the bottom layer with my move tool selected I'm going to move that to the right and then place it where I think looks good and I see a highlight here so I kind of want to hide that highlight so I think I think something like that looks good I'm just going to click on the top layer and then press control E on the keyboard or layer merge down to merge those two layers I'm going to double click on the name so I can rename it and I'll name this table then I'm going to click and drag on the image press control T to bring in my transform options then right click on the image select the start click on the middle handle and drag the image down I'm going to try to keep it as straight as I can and I'll bring it down to the horizon line then I'm going to right click on the image again click on perspective and click on the right perspective handle and just drag it out about 66 or so degrees uh, maybe 67 then I'm going to drag this image to the right right click on the image click on scale and scale to the left but I'm going to hold alt so it scales from the center point so it just stretches out just a little bit then I'm going to click and drag the image to the, right, to the left again and snap it to the center of my image and I see a little space in between my foreground and my background between my table and my background so I'm just going to scale it up just a little bit and press enter when I'm done then I'm going to click and drag the table layer below my wall so we can see I'm going to also I'm going to press control H on my keyboard to hide these guys so you can see so we can see the horizon line it's not one sharp edge you can see uh, there's a little blur to it I'm going to bring my guides back by pressing control H on the keyboard also you can get rid of those by clicking on view show and guides and you can bring them back by doing the same thing view show guides or you can just press control H now we're gonna create our transparent egg to do that I'm gonna open up another image and this image is a bubble it's just one of those bubbles that you make with soap when you're a kid I'm gonna turn this bubble into our egg so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my marquee tool select the optical marquee tool and just kinda draw a marquee around the bubble you don't have to be perfect but try to get it to it as close as you can then click on the layer mask icon to delete everything around the image click on the layer mask and click on apply layer mask so it just deletes everything around we won't need anything around it so it's okay to to get rid of that layer mask what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on our smudge tool and we're gonna set the strength to about 32 percent and increase my brush size to something about 125 pixels or so should be okay and we're just gonna click and drag just do a lot of small clicks and small drags to kinda remove any recognizable area you can kinda tell that it's a house and some trees and you know that's not really gonna work for our image so I'm just gonna 
just move around and make sure not to go over the line because you'll make as much like I did there and that won't look too good one way of pre preventing that from happening is just clicking on the lock transparent pixels icon and then that way you can never go over the line so maybe you want to do that it's up to you and I'm just gonna quickly remove any details I guess you could also do a filter blur Gaussian blur if you like but something very subtle maybe 2.6 or something like that the point is is that you want to get rid of anything that's recognizable I think that'll work okay and we can always come back and edit it if we need to once you're done with that if you set the transparent lock you can just take that off you can bring this into our composition by clicking and dragging the tab down clicking and dragging the image onto our composition and you can just close this window we won't be needing it anymore and click and drag our egg all the way to the top or our bubble but we'll rename it to egg since it will be an egg pretty soon click and drag your bubble or egg to the middle of the composition you can press control T so you could just put it right dead in the center I'm gonna click on the right transform box by holding alt so I can constrain it to shrinking down to the middle and something about 380 pixels would work okay so I'm just gonna kinda get it as close as I can to, to uh, 380 I don't have to be perfect so and the height will be about 480 pixels so that looks pretty good and I'll press enter when I'm done and I'm gonna do one other thing I'm gonna press control T right click on it and click on warp and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make it just a little bit fatter from the middle and I'm gonna bring in the top just a little bit to kinda make it look more like an egg so the the top is skinny the middle is fat and the bottom is skinny again so I'm gonna bring that in from each corner and when I'm done I'm just gonna press enter and that's our alien egg next I'm gonna change the blending mode to luminosity and change my opacity to about 40, 40, 44, 43 percent. I guess I'll leave it at 43. Next, we're gonna bring in our alien creature, and actually, our alien creature is not so alien. This is actually a salmon fly. I don't know too much about these creatures. If you do, please feel free to leave a comment below letting me know what they are. I believe they're used for fishing. I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, they look kind of like an alien embryo, so this is perfect. What we're going to do is we're going to crop crop it out of the background. And to do that, I'm going to use the quick selection tool. And I'm just going to click on the alien and just kind of select it. And it does a pretty good job, as you can see. I'm just going to click and drag and and I'm going to decrease the size of the tool by clicking on the bracket keys on the keyboard to select the tail and it kind of selected more than I wanted to but that's okay it's not a big deal so I'm just going to click and drag and notice there's a few mistakes like this part here and maybe a little bit of the hand there and the tail we're going to use the quick mask view to fix that uh, I'm going to zoom into the tail first then I'm going to click on the quick mask icon which is right below your color palette and when I click on that notice that everything that is not selected is in red everything that is selected is in its normal color so what we can do now is use our brush tool and anything that we set to white will select so for example I want to select this little claw paw thing here so I'm just so I have my white foreground selected my brush tool selected I'm going to decrease the size of the brush and just color that in and I'll do the same for this side and that's pretty much it everything else is okay uh, maybe I want to get a little bit more of the back here so I'm going to increase the size of my tool by clicking on the bracket keys and just bring that in maybe this part here just any area where the quick selection tool missed you can color in by using your brush tool and you can take away if you set your background color to black you can draw out the areas that you do not want to select so I'm just gonna try to fix this tail up a little bit and again you don't have to be 100 percent perfect you can make some mistakes this is gonna be behind the egg layer so things won't be too noticeable if you go over the line or miss a spot 
So I'm just going to double click on the zoom tool to see the entire image and this selection looks really good. Actually I noticed that I just missed a spot here in the back so I'm going to brush that in really quick. Okay, that looks pretty good now. And I'm going to click on my quick mask icon once again and notice that it's now selecting the areas that I missed earlier. And I can actually see a mistake here so I'm going to go back and fix that. I missed it earlier so um you can see the tail goes down just a little bit more and this is not part of the salmon fly so let me get rid of that yeah and that looks pretty good and as you can see I did a good job there I'm gonna double click on my zoom tool to see the entire image then I'm gonna double click on my background layer to make it into a regular layer and I can apply a layer mask to it by clicking on the layer mask icon and getting rid of the background I can apply my layer mask since we know we're not going to be needing the background for this particular image. I'm going to click on the move tool, click and drag the tab down, click and drag my salmon fly onto my composition, close this image since I know I won't be needing it anymore. I don't need to save it. Click on no. And now I have my salmon fly in my composition, but it's no longer a salmon fly. It is now an alien creature. So I'm going to double click on the layer and rename it alien and this time I spelled it right unlike before where I spelled a line but oh well next I'm gonna make this into a smart object by click by right clicking on it and clicking on convert to smart object then I'm gonna click on filter apply a Gaussian blur of one pixel press OK and then I'm gonna add one more filter which is a plastic wrap that can be found in the filter gallery and it's under artistic, it's under the artistic folder and click on plastic wrap and set your highlight strength to 9 your detail to 11, your smoothness to 5 and what that does is it creates this effect where the creature looks wet and slimy and that's what you want to go for because I'm assuming there's some sort of fluids or I don't know there's something inside that egg keeping that thing alive and I'm sure it's wet and slimy so we're gonna press OK and we're gonna set the opacity to 90% and we're going to click and drag that onto the egg. I'm going to press Control T on the keyboard to transform this image and it's going to tell me that while I'm transforming the image some of the filters will not be applied, that's okay. I'm going to click on the on the top right where I can rotate my alien creature and I want the tip of his tail to be on top of the egg, like so maybe this is some type of umbilical cord that is keeping this creature alive I don't know I don't know much about alien egg anatomy but I think this is what would happen if this were a real creature then I'm going to click on the bottom corner hold shift and scale it down just a little bit somewhere about 345 pixels width will work okay actually maybe just a little more maybe maybe 325 and I can rotate it just a little more actually and move it this way. I don't know, I just kinda gotta place it in the right spot. Yeah, I think that looks good. Press enter when you're done and click and drag the alien layer below the egg layer. And that's looking pretty good. Next, we're gonna add a shadow to this image. I'm gonna have a light source coming in from the top left and if the light is coming in from the top left the shadow will be cast on the bottom right of the egg. So I'm going to add a shadow right here. I'm going to collapse these smart filters just so we can see them. We don't need to be looking at them and it keeps everything much cleaner. Right above my table layer, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to name it Egg Shadow. Press Enter when I'm done. And while this layer is selected, I'm going to press Control on the keyboard and click on the egg to create a selection around the egg then with my eyedropper tool I'm gonna to find the darkest brown I can find and it's somewhere around here and that I don't think that'll be dark enough so I'm gonna click on the foreground color and bring it down to somewhere around here that's pretty dark and this is gonna be my shadow I don't like using complete black shadows because that's not how shadows work in the real world they always kind of have the hue of the surface that it's on so this surface is kind of brownish so I'm going to select the brown that's related to that surface then I'm going to press OK 
I'm going to press Alt and Backspace to fill that layer and notice that only half of the egg got a shadow. Well, that's because I made a mistake. I actually create I actually told you to place the egg shadow below the wool layer. That's not really what I should have done. I should have placed it above the wool layer. And then when it's there, I can press on control T on the keyboard to transform it, then click on the distort tool and distort it onto the table. So I'm gonna place that somewhere here on this table. And I'm just gonna distort it to where I think it should be in somewhere around there. Then I'm gonna click on filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna give it a blur of about 6.8 pixels would work okay and press OK. I'm going to click on this egg shadow. I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to press Control T to transform it and kind of bring it to about the middle of the other image. I'm going to do the same thing once again. Click and drag and press Control T and bring that in closer to the egg. So the shadow is dark, light, lightest. I'm going to select all three layers, press Control E on my keyboard to make them all into one layer. I'll rename it once again. I'll just keep it as egg shadow and from here I can press control T on my keyboard to maybe make it a little bit wider I think it's a little too narrow and I think that's looking okay maybe it's a little too tall too so maybe I can bring that in just a little bit and then you can kinda of play around with this and get it to wherever you think looks good okay now that we created that shadow we're gonna create a highlight so if there's a light source coming from here there'll be a shadow and there will also be a highlight right about here so I'm going to click on a new layer icon, rename this layer Highlight, and I'm going to go to my brush tool, set my foreground color to white, and get a brush of about 200 pixels, but make sure that you have a soft brush selected. I selected a brush with no softness to it, that's not going to work, so I'm just going to click on another brush that's soft, and make sure the size is 200, and come back. You don't have to click right below it, because if you click here, um, if you drag this layer up, notice that hardness. It didn't create pixels right below where the canvas ends, and we don't want to do that. We just want to click, you know, you can pretty much click anywhere. Just make sure that you're not near an edge. You can move that anywhere you like. So once you click once, you can move that layer around and place it right below the egg. Then change the blending mode to overlay. And now that it's placed below the egg, it's looking pretty good. I think that this highlight, it's not strong enough. I kind of would like it to be a little stronger, so I'm just going to click and duplicate that highlight. And now it's too strong. So I'm just going to press Control T, and I'm going to bring that in just a little bit, bring it down, and move it closer to the bottom. Press Enter, and it's still too harsh, so I'm going to change the opacity. I'm going to bring it down to zero. And I'm just going to increase it just a little bit to where I think it looks good. And some are about 63% looks good. So I'll leave that for now. And now that we're creating highlights and shadows, why don't we add some highlights and shadows to our alien? It's looking a little flat and we want to give it a little more dimension. So click on our alien layer, then click on a new layer icon. And we're going to fill this layer with 50% gray. To do that, click on the foreground layer, click on brightness in the hue saturation options here, select brightness, and then type in 50, 50% 50 gray. Press OK and then fill that layer with gray. So everything turns gray but if we set this to overlay it becomes transparent. So what we can do now is with our burn tool and our dodge tool we can add shadows and highlights and let me show you what I mean by that. We'll add some highlights first by clicking on the dodge tool Make sure that your range is set to midtones. Exposure of about 50% is okay. Make sure you have a soft brush. And you can decrease or increase the size of your brush as need be by clicking on the bracket keys on the keyboard. Now, again, we said earlier that our light source is going to be coming from the top left. So we have to think which parts of the aliens would have highlights. Well, this part for sure, if the light's coming from here, its head will have highlights. So I'm just going to draw in some highlights right on the alien itself. And it's okay if you go over the line. We're going to fix that in a moment. And the alien will probably have some highlights here as well. And maybe a little bit in the bottom too, because this highlight might reflect some light right below him. So I'm just going to give those highlights. 
and we're going to do the same thing with shadows. So I'm going to select the burn tool, and we have to think where the where the shadows will be. Well, obviously on this side, if the light's coming in from the left, the shadows will be on the right. So I'm going to draw in some shadows on its right side, maybe right below its head. Just pretty much anywhere I think there'll be some some shadows. Okay. Now this is after, and this is before. So as you can see, it's already taking shape. But we kind of went over the line, so you can kind of see this little halo above his head and the shadow right below its back, and that's not looking too good. So what we need to do is create a clipping mask between the alien and our highlights slash shadows. And to do that, make sure that your alien highlight shadows layer is above your alien layer, and w when your cursor is right in between both, click on the Alt key on the keyboard when you get that down pointing arrow with the white square next to it to create a clipping mask. Notice that when we do that everything that's not part of the alien goes away. So that extra halo and that extra shadows are gone and the highlights are only applied to our alien. So once again that's this is after, before, after, before, after. And you can always go back and add more shadows if need be or more highlights by using the dodge and burn tool Again, the more time you spend on this, the, the more detail you give it, the better it will look. I don't have time to go into too much detail, but I think you get the idea. It looks pretty good with what we've done so far. The next step is we're going to give this alien some lights. And what I mean by that is that these little green parts, like along its back and its tail, it looks like it would be emitting light. So let me just do it, and then you'll see what I mean. I'm going to click on my brush tool, make sure my foreground's set to white. And everywhere I see these little green areas, I'm going to color in white. So I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to paint white right along these green areas here. And some of these are just dots, so all I need to do is just click. Notice I'm going over the lines, and that's OK. It's not a big deal. I'm going to decrease my size to go here on the tail. And just keep adding them anywhere you think there would be some highlights. And you know what, I made this he long line here. I don't think that looks too good, so I'm just going to press Control z to undo that. Control alt c actually, to undo those steps. And just add them. OK, once you're done, uh, change the layer name to Alien Lights, and change the blending mode to overlay. And as you can see, it kind of looks like the like the alien has these glowing lights on it. So this is be, this is after and before. After and before. Uh, this might be a little too bright here, so I can just use my eraser and just increase the brush size and just erase some of it. It looks a little bit better. And now it looks like the alien is glowing, like it's got some energy inside of him, and that looks pretty cool. So that's without it, that's with it, and I think it looks much better. Okay, and one other thing I'll do, I don't, I don't think it's necessary, but I'm just going to also add it to the clipping mask, just in case some of the highlights go past the alien creature, and, they're, and that way they're cropped out. Next, we're going to add some bubbles into the egg, since there's probably some liquid in there, maybe some oxygen. Let me show you how we're going to do that. I'm going to open up a new image, and I'm going to use this image to create our bubbles in our egg. I'm going to click on the rectangular marquee tool and then just crop my image so it only shows the bubbles. I don't need none of the other things on the side. Next, I'm going to go into Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, Desaturate the image, then Image, Adjustment, Curves, and darken this image up. And this area here is still pretty light, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the burn tool and then just color in the dark areas and I'll make the brush just a little bit bigger and that looks okay I'm gonna add another image adjustment levels just to kinda of darken up darken that up just a little bit more okay that seems to be okay for now I'm gonna click on the move tool click and drag on the tab and drag the image into our composition I don't need to save it. I'm going to name this layer Bubbles. And I'm going to move it behind the alien layer. And 
change the blending mode to screen click and drag that into position press control T to scale the image and I guess I can make it a little bit wider and also I'm going to do a warp selection so I can kind of move the bubbles around with more precision and press enter when you're done and that's looking pretty good next I'm going to add a layer mask around the egg to hide everything that it's outside the egg so I'm going to press control on my keyboard and click on the egg layer to create that marquee around the egg on my bubbles layer I'm making sure my bubbles layer is selected I'm going to click on the layer mask to create a layer mask around that and now our bubbles are inside the egg also I would imagine that this is not clear crystal water so I'm sure there's some dust and some other spectacles of things there so I'm gonna add with this jellyfish image I'm gonna make a selection to the right of this image and you'll notice that there's uh, dust and spectacles and all these little other things in the water there so I'm gonna use those to add them to my image so I'm gonna just copy and paste it onto my composition I'm gonna rename the layer dust and set the blending mode to difference then I'm going to press control T on my keyboard and resize my image so it's just as about the size of my egg maybe just a little bit bigger uh, yeah just and I'm actually trying to find where the, there's more dust particles that are visible so they would look good on my composition so I don't know something like I think something like that would be good. Um, I realize this is actually m bigger than I wanted it to be, so I'm just going to delete the bottom part, part of the right side, just because there's less particles there. There's more particles here on, on the top left, on the right, and I'm going to just scale it down just a little bit more. And I'm going to bring the width in just a little bit. I kind of want to keep the same shape of my same width and height of my egg. Once I'm happy with that, I can press Control T, right click on the layer, click on Warp to kind of bring that, bring the corners in just to get more particles in there. And again, I don't have to be 100% perfect, but I do got to cover the entire egg. Once you're done, press Enter. And you can create another layer mask by clicking the layer mask right below it, the one in the bubbles layer. Hold Control on your keyboard and click on the layer mask to make a selection around it make sure your dust layer is selected and click on the layer mask icon to create a layer mask around that next I'm gonna click and drag my dust layer right above my egg layer so the dust particles are a little bit more prominent and that looks pretty good you can kinda of see them here here and there so I think that's looking pretty good next we're gonna go back into our jellyfish image and this time we're going to draw a marquee right around our jellyfish and we're just going to go to edit copy and we can now close this image since we won't need it anymore press ctrl v to paste press ctrl t to transform the image and bring it up to the top of the egg and we're going to flip it horizontally so this part of the jellyfish blends with our alien creature so I'm just going to place that right above the top of the egg. I'm going to click and drag my pivot point to the top of the egg. So now that jellyfish rotates along that pivot point. And just kind of rotate it to the right a little bit so it matches that same curvature, maybe just a little bit more. And press enter when you're done. Then I'm going to set my blending mode to screen. And move it right below my alien layer. I'm going to control click on the layer mask to my bubbles to create a layer mask around the egg and make sure that my new jellyfish slash membrane layer is selected and create a new layer mask. Okay now that we added that layer mask I'm noticing that our alien is just a little too big so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the alien layer I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and I'm going to click on the alien lights so it selects these three layers. Once those three layers are selected, I'm going to press Ctrl G on my keyboard 
to create a group and now these three layers are all in one group and I can transform them all at once and what that will do is that will allow me to press control T on my keyboard so I can transform that alien egg and not lose any of the placement I had of the lights, highlights and shadows so I'm just going to scale that down just a little bit and I'm going to rotate it a little more something like that and that looks pretty good. I'm going to press enter then I'll click on the move tool hold shift down on the keyboard to move it down just a little bit and I'm going to go back into my main brain and move that to the left and maybe up and you know what when, when I move it it's going outside the egg and the reason that's happening is because my layer and my layer mask are linked and I don't want them to be linked not for what I'm doing right now so what I'm going to do now I'm going to click on the chain link icon in between the layer and the layer mask so I can move them independently from each other and then I'm going to select the move tool again and move that membrane and not worry about going over the line since the layer mask is staying put so I just want to get the head of my jellyfish to match the curvature of the top of the egg and also this little section here it kind of seems like it's attaching to the alien creature. Also, I noticed that there's a harsh edge around here, and that's because the screen blending mode is making any pixels that are white solid and any pixels that are dark transparent. So these pixels are a little on the gray side, so you can kind of see them. So I'm going to have to darken those up a little bit. But if I open the levels panel and click on the dark pixels and move them to the right a little bit to make them even darker, you'll notice that, that harsh line is now gone and that's what I wanted so I'm just gonna press OK once I'm done and it's looking pretty good now you can do other things to your layer if you want to like maybe distorting it a little bit more using the warp tool to kinda match the curvature of your creature if you wanted to I'm not gonna take too much time to do that but that is certainly an option that you have if you wanna match these two just a little bit more so when you're done you can just press on enter and I'm gonna move that to the right now that I moved it it kinda of changed the curvature a little bit so I gotta rematch it again but that looks looks like it's still off so I just gotta kinda of find the right spot for it and, and that looks pretty good right there one other thing I'm gonna do is I don't wanna have this bottom part of the jellyfish right below our alien creature so I'm gonna click on my brush tool set my foreground color to black increase the brush size make sure it's a soft brush and then just add to my layer mask so it deletes the pixels right below the alien creature. Next I'm going to add one more layer on top of every other layer and I'm just going to call it highlight and I'm going to get a new brush set my brush size to something big like 400 and on the top left I'm actually going to make the brush bigger on the top left I'm just going to click on one time oops sorry I forgot to make that white so I gotta set my foreground color to white click on it once and that's going to be my highlight this is going to be the light source coming from the left side of the image I'm going to set this to overlay and decrease the opacity to about 59 or 65 percent actually maybe even a little bit more 85 I think 85 percent will look good and we're going to add one more highlight and this is kind of an interesting highlight it's uh, it's a color highlight and let me first show you how that looks like and then I'll explain it so the first thing you need to do is create a new layer and I'll just name it color highlight and I'm going to set my brush size to about 200 pixels then I'm going to click alt on my keyboard and notice that when I do I get an eyedropper tool well what I want to do is I want to select some of the green in this alien so I'm going to select some of the green up here by his eye uh, something darker so something like that that looks pretty good and then just click off to the side it doesn't really matter where we're just gonna move that around I'm just gonna click here on the left side just gonna click in once and that's just a green dot I'm gonna do the same thing in one of these yellow areas so I'm gonna I gotta find a yellow that I'm happy with and something like that this yellow orange color and you know what I'm gonna double click on it and just make it a little more yellow something like that and then just click right next to that dot so now we have a green dot and a yellow dot. Then I'm gonna get I'm gonna try to get some of this orange just right below its mouth. And let me just get the right orange here. And again, I might not be able to get it, so actually I almost have it. Uh that orange right there. So once I get that orange, I'm gonna click right below the green dot. And 
I'm going to try to get some of that red that's in there as well. So that one will probably be hard to get. Actually, no, I got it right there, that red. So now I got green, yellow, orange, and red. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the blending mode to screen. I'm going to click on the move tool and drag it right here, right where that shadow is, right below there. That's where I'm going to place it. So I'm going to press Control T and just decrease the size of it and kind of make it long and put it right below that. Now you can really see the dots on here. You can. I want to kind of blend those in just a little more. So I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And I think I took it too far. I'm just going to bring that down and move it to about 19 or so pixels. And then just do a regular Gaussian Blur. So go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and bring that down to about 2.1 pixels works well for me. Just so all the colors are blended so you can see them, but you don't see any edges between them. And press OK when you're done. And I think it's looking pretty good, but I still think that it's a little too big, so I'm going to press Control T once again and just make it just a little bit thinner. That looks pretty good. You can kind of move it around with the arrow tools on your keyboard if you have your move tool selected. So I'm just going to place it where I think it it would work. So now what this highlight is is just the color that will be reflected on the table if light were to go through glass or something clear and it hits the colors of whatever's inside of it you kind of get this highlight right under the table so I think it's a nice little touch a little detail that just makes everything a little more realistic so you can uh, include it if you like I think it works feel free to do whatever you like on your composition so everything's looking pretty good but I'm not liking the mood on my scene it's just too plain and too pale so I'm gonna add a photo filter and what that will do is it'll give a different t color tone to the image so click on the adjustment layer icon and select photo filter now in the properties panel for the color filter set the density to somewhere around twenty percent or so it'll, it'll barely give it this orange warm glow or feel to the image and I think it does a lot. Next I'm going to add another adjustment layer this time we're going to add curves and we're going to create an S curve so we're going to click on the bottom part of this line here click and drag down which will make things darker and then on the top part we'll click and drag up which will make things lighter so this is called an S curve and it might be a little too intense if it is just bring down the opacity of this to whatever you think looks good so that's zero opacity that's a hundred percent probably about ninety percent or so will work okay for what for the curves that I've added to my image next I'm gonna click on my marquee tool click and drag around the entire image go to edit copy merge so you can copy everything on in my composition and then paste it so now we have a layer that includes the entire image and the reason we're doing this is because I'm going to blur it so I'm gonna go to filter blur Gaussian blur and then I'm gonna give it a blur of about 3.5 pixels then press OK I'm gonna add a layer mask to this to this layer and I'm gonna click on the brush tool put my brush right in the middle of the image and then with my bracket tools I'm gonna make the brush larger and make sure that you have black on your foreground and just click on the image once maybe twice the reason we did this is so the outside of the image could be blurry but not the egg so it kinda gives it this interesting depth of field and actually I want this bottom part to be blurry as well so I'm gonna change my foreground color to white increase the size of my brush and then just kinda bring in that bottom part of the image uh, blurry part of the image so it so now you see the bottom part is blurry the sides are blurry and maybe the top can be blurry as well and I think that looks pretty good and finally we're gonna create we're gonna add one more layer and we're gonna fill this layer with black and before I do anything else let me just rename it before I forget I'm gonna name it Beanyet I'm gonna add a layer mask to it and make sure your brush tool is selected and your foreground color is set to black and I'm gonna fill the layer mask with black then I'm gonna change my foreground color to white with my brush tool selected I'm gonna increase the size of it and then just click once and then twice 
And you know what? I made a mistake. What I wanted was the opposite of what happened. I wanted to have black outside and nothing in the middle. So now we have black in the middle and nothing on the outside. Well, that's easy to fix. You can just click on the layer mask and press Control I to invert, and now you have this vignette around the image. Now, if it's too dark, you can do two things. You can bring down the opacity and kind of set it to wherever you like, or you can color in with black and get rid of some of that vignette. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the latter. I'm just gonna add some black to my image and I think I took away way too much so I'm just gonna press control Z a couple times and I think that's looking pretty okay this is before and this is after and I think I'll do a combination of both actually I'm gonna bring the opacity down just a little bit so something like 73 percent oh actually you know what I just noticed I forgot one thing we need to add a highlight to our egg if the lights coming from this side the egg needs to have a highlight here so I'm just gonna click on my brush tool make sure my foreground set to white add a new layer name it egg highlight and just click on the left upper side of the egg and that's our egg highlight right there and it might be a little too strong so you can bring down the opacity just a little bit maybe about 75 percent and I think that looks okay it's not right where I want it so I'm just gonna click on the move tool and move it up just a little bit it could be even right on the edge but I think that's a little too much I think the highlight needs to be right in the inside there and I'm also noticing that the vignette that I created is hiding a lot of the highlight here. And actually, now that I see the brightness, I think the highlight should be even lower. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. But um, the vignette is hiding a lot of the highlight. So I'm going to click on the vignette mask. Make sure my foreground set to black. Click on my brush tool. And I'm just going to brush out dark pixels there. And you know what? Actually, never mind. I'm just going to press Control Z just make this brush larger and just click on it one time sorry about that I clicked on the wrong layer I need to click on the vignette layer mask and then click on here to bring that highlight back but now it might be a little too bright so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to edit fade brush tool so I can fade that last brush stroke so I'm gonna fade it to about 65 percent 65 percent looks good so now we have a vignette and we also have that highlight on the upper left and I think it looks much much better Okay, now we have the entire image completed. It's our alien creature growing out of a clear egg. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you're watching this tutorial on YouTube, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you would like to share with me the work you created using this tutorial, head over to my website, PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com, where you can watch all of my tutorials and where you can share the link to your image file in the comments section for this tutorial. And while you're there, help us out by clicking on the Google Plus, Tweet, or Facebook buttons. Also, if you want to receive every new tutorial as soon as it comes out, enter your email address to subscribe to our newsletter. I will also be doing newsletter member only tutorials, so don't miss out and sign up now. If you have a Facebook account, become our fan by clicking on the like button where you can leave your comments, questions, and also post the work you created using this tutorial. I would love to see your work on there. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk again soon.